All right, so we finally reached the outro section of Take the Time. Um, okay, so we're going to go over sort of the chord progression that happens here when the guitar enters. Uh, it starts off with Kevin Moore's piano playing the chords E, F sharp over E, A over E, everything's over a pedal E, then C to D, all over E, which then comes back to the E. Now there's, a, there's actually a Kansas song that this is very reminiscent of. I'm going to play a little sample of it real quick in between here. Sounds very similar, doesn't it? Right. That was the first. That was my first thought. I actually heard this song "Take the Time" before I heard the "Death of Mother Nature" suite, and I just thought it was odd that the endings to these were so similar. Right. They decided to use this chord progression on the ending of this song, and then Kansas, way back in seventy, uh, whatever that was, seventy-three, their first album, decided to use a very similar chord progression on the outro of their own song. And very. Very interesting. All right, so let's get into uh, how this is played when it finally goes in, right? So it starts off with a little lead part, right, that outlines those chords that I just told you about. And it goes like this. in with the slide but I've never seen Petrucci use a slide live because I don't think he uh, I was like he's just too lazy to get one and it would be too much of a hassle for such a minute part right so this is how we would do it live because you have this sort of thing going with this this A chord shape except it's on an E so get up to F sharp and then we go up to an A I see him do a fourth fret harmonic. Kind of like that. A fourth fret natural harmonic and just wail away on that, on this uh, nice Floyd Rose we got here. Which, by the way, not the original tremolo. I'm actually kind of upset, but hey, I'll take it. This guitar is appreciating in value like you wouldn't believe. Physical assets, get them. Anyway, let's get back into what we're doing here. So, so we have that going on. And we come in with this other little riff, which is basically just playing along perfect fourths with lots of distortion on top of those, uh, those chords that I was talking about earlier. So we're going to go like this. So not too much to say about that, except you have perfect fourths indicated, you know, by the root and the fifth of each chord, with an E, open E commute in between each of them, right? Now, I know I didn't start off doing uh, all down picks, but I'd say to make it heavier, you can handle that at down picking speed. We don't have to relax for that part. Let's do some down picks. Let's go back to kill them all. Let's go back to some head feel with that, all right? So that little uh, that little interlude kind of lead there, that little lead coming in there, um, it outlines all the chords almost exactly how they should be, right? It's textbook melodic writing, right? So we start off with the G sharp on top of the E, like this. And then we anticipate the sharp four, which then becomes the third of the F sharp chord, okay? And then we bend into the C sharp of the A chord. We go, which is just Mi, Re, Do, right? Mi, Re, Do is Mary Had a Little Lamb. Doesn't get any simpler than that, folks. Then we go up to the fifth of the A chord, and then we do a half step bend on the 12th fret, which is just B, C, so that's outlining the C natural which that's exactly where it goes in the song. It goes to a C chord right there. 
And then we do this. Which is the major third of the C chord. And then the sharp four, adding a Lydian sound to it. So, when in doubt, go Lydian, man. Okay. So we have this coming out in the, the second part. We're going to the G sharp root again. And then here we're anticipating the lower octave sharp four, which becomes the F sharp's third. And we do a little, a little wanking on it. And then we do a, a perfect second inversion A major arpeggio. The notes E, A, and C sharp. Doesn't get any more textbook than that. And then this. Okay, and that's just the note C, which is the root, major third, sharp four, leading in again, and then half step bend to the perfect fifth. Now this kind of uses, uh, well not kind of, it uses modal mixture. So we're going between the keys e, ma e major with the Lydian, or like an E Lydian type of thing, which is a major mode, to the E minor mode, which happens over the C chord. All right, so just a little bit of food for thought right there, okay? You have two different scales going on. The E Lydian scale, and the E minor scale to account for all the chords that we're moving between. It's called mode mixture. Look into it. So to get a very firm grasp of this guitar solo, I'm going to go through each of the uh, each of the modes that are utilized during this, right? So for the E and the F sharp, the same scale is utilized, right? It, it, it would either be the E Lydian scale, which is an E major scale with a sharp fourth. <laughs> an F Mixolydian scale, which is a major scale with a flat seven. If you use them interchangeably, it won't matter, okay? Because the E always anticipates the F sharp, which means we're always gonna have that, that sharp four going with a Lydian mode with the E major. And then with that F sharp, since we just came from the E, it's fresh on our mind. And the E is the literal flat seven of the F sharp. So that flat seven sound is still fresh in our brains and we're ready to keep using that, that sort of mode, right? Now, when we hit the A scale, um, it kind of uh, sets up the C scale in a, little, in a, in a very subtle way. Um, here, we can either use the E major scale on top of this because now we have an A natural instead of an A sharp. So that sharp four from the previous two scales is now quelled. It's back to the regular four. So you can do the E major scale, which would create a Lydian sound with the A, or even better, let's use the A major scale. Right? Now another thing you could do is you could flat the seven making an A Mixolydian scale, right? Which that G natural would set up the C chord perfectly. Right, so we're going A with a flat seven to C. 
still hitting that G natural, which would be the, uh, the perfect fifth of the C chord and the flat seventh of the A chord. So keep these little uh, common tones in mind, right? The common tones are how modal interchange can occur. Okay, and then coming out of that, we have the C chord, which is the C Lydian scale. C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C. Right, it's a major scale with a sharp four. Um, the direct equivalent to this is E minor. So it's interesting how we have an E major type scale starting the entire thing off and then we're capping it off with an E minor. That's why you see these E minor blues licks happening later on in the solo. Now, let's get to technically what's going on here. So, the solo starts off exactly how the earlier little lick happens, the earlier little interlude melodic guitar part. So, all right, so that's the same deal. You're sliding into the G sharp, which is the major third of the E to the root, and then you're anticipating the sharp four, which then becomes the third of the F sharp chord, okay? Then we do the same thing, Mi, Re, Do, with a little extra flavor there, right? It's not as straightforward as before. Because now we're in the solo. Now we really got to make a statement here. So we're doing that with the Mi, Re, Do to the perfect fifth, and then coming into the C chord. That's exactly the same as it was earlier with slightly more, you know, embellished vibrato. Then we come back again. And we do this. So right there, we're hitting on the E chord, then on the F sharp chord we're going, that's doing G sharp, which is actually the sus2 of the, uh, of the F sharp chord. So we're almost pretending like we're in G sharp minor here with uh, 1, 2, flat 3, but how it happens over the F sharp we go 3, sus4, coming back down with a release, and then with a little half step bend to that 4 again, and then we're tapping that note all the way up top. So since we're doing a half step bend, we're going to tap the 18th fret of the B string, which will actually be a static 19th fret, which is the root note. Okay, so you're tapping from here up to the root of the chord, and then you release it, then we do this again, that reminds me of the Lord of the Rings kind of, but uh, that goes perfectly into the C major chord, which is the, uh, the Lydian mode, right? So here you have the major third of the C, to the sharp four, to the fifth, back down to the nine, and then a little three sharp four three to resolve it, which then goes perfectly back to the E. Because hey, look, we're on E. The major third of a C is E, which is the root of E. Incredible, incredible. Okay, and then we have this little lick. So this anticipates the F sharp. This is almost like um, an E6 type of feel because you're going from the two to the three, to the fifth, to the sixth, to the root, major third, perfect fifth, right? So you're doing... Now slide into the first couple notes, and then here we have to pick the rest. We land on the A sharp, which is right on the downbeat of the F sharp chord, and then we do this. This is cool. Okay, this is a, a sweet picky type of thing. So we're picking the note and we're sweeping down an F sharp dominant seventh chord. Remember what I said before, F sharp mixolydian, which is the flat seven. And then we do the same thing, but inverted. Okay, you're going five, three, one, flat seven to five, root, flat seven, five, Major third, one, three, five, flat seven, one. Okay, so even though it sounds like a difficult part, conceptually, it's very simple. 
guys like playing that. And then we do a very similar thing again, but we're coming down here when it goes to the A chord. Alright, now this is outlining an A6 chord or an F sharp minor 7 type of arpeggio. So we have, I'll, I'll do it in, in relation to A6. So we're starting on the 5th, just like we did up here. We're starting on the 5th again. 5, 3, 1, 6. Okay? And then to 5. So you're going all the way down the octave. And then we're going root, 6, 5, back up the original arpeggio. So, and you want to make sure you're really catching those rakes. You want to really rake it, you know what I'm saying? All right, you want to be mad at those leaves. You want to be mad that your neighbor just dumped a pile of leaves in your front lawn. You got to get revenge on the leaves. It's obviously the leaves' fault. The leaves shouldn't have been there. You know, people just don't have any kind of sense anymore. So let's go with, uh, the very final part, after that whole, you know, sweepy section, we just end it like this. Which is the five, the sharp four, and the three of the C chord, right? Which leads into our bluesy part, right? Now, the blues can interchange and play with major and minor tonalities. So, our chord on the bottom of this section is an E major. But we can get away with playing these blues licks, right? So we're on the uh, 15th fret of the high E, and we're going pull off to the 12th, hit the 15th on the B, and just repeat it. And then go 17, back to 15. And you do that again. Right? And then you do the same thing, same frets, except here, because of the way the strings are tuned, we're getting this flat five in between every time. It sounds awesome. And actually, this works really well with the F sharp chord because it is hitting the third of the F sharp chord, which is also the flat five of the E blues scale. So you get this E blues with the F sharp chord at the same time. Very clever way of utilizing that note. So we do that twice. And then we hop into this next part, which is even more blues, just... Now that, it is a descending blues pattern with some extra chromatic notes in it. Then we hold that last bend on the F sharp, which is the, uh, you know, it's the sharp four of the C, and it's also the two of the E. We're coming right back in though, resolving, and we're doing this really big three note per string triplet type of thing. That's 16th note triplets, six notes per beat, okay? Don't mess it up. So we're going like this, we're starting 12, 14, 16, and we're going like this. We're starting there, and then we're going 11, 12, 14 up two strings. Then we're coming back down to the A, we're going 12, 14, 16 again. So this is like an E mixolydian scale. And then we come up to here, and we slick, we slick. Is slicking a verb? It's going to be a verb today. We're going to slick our way right into the F sharp flat seven scale. And we're gonna go. Okay, so we have this. And then we're gonna bend into the C sharp, which happens right on the A chord. And as we know, the C sharp is the third of the A chord. And then we're gonna do this. Now that's just like a, uh, you're doing all down picks, right? But you have to make sure you're doing your, um, your hammer-ons and pull-offs in the right spot. So you're hammering in, double picking, pulling, picking again, 
Hammering, pick, pull, pick, hammer, pick. Right? So you're just alternating between hammer, pick, pull, hammer, pick, pull, right? All that good stuff. And then to end the song, which by this point the song has already faded out, but I added a little bit more at the end, so I'll include that with this. I'll include that, uh, that little tab in the end. So I'm going like this. So that's just doing a, uh, a pull-off, sort of a Thunderstruck style pull-off. Just 5-3-1 with the open E string. And then we go... That's 5-1, five, 5-2, five, 5-3. Five, right? And then I'm messing around with this... Uh, that's kind of just like an A chord, the A7, right? So I'm actually utilizing the A7. And then I, then I begin messing around with the uh, C Lydian scale. If I end it there, I can finally get back into E major with no problem, and we can repeat this as many times as, uh, as we need to, just like they do live in a lot of different performances. I suggest the, um, the once in a lifetime version, if you could, with the extended, uh, the, extended, the extended break going at the end. Very good stuff, very good stuff. All right, everybody, thanks so much for sticking around for this third installment. We made it all the way through every single part of Take the Time by Dream Theater. Pat yourself on the back, because that's a very difficult feat. You know, we have a lot, a lot of different instrumental sections that we covered, a lot of extremely technically difficult portions, um, modal inter interchange, time changes, all sorts of stuff, the whole gamut, right? And not to mention all the stylistic changes in the sound of the guitar, too. So next up is going to be Surrounded. We get a little bit of a break. This is another ballad. Although there is some fancy stuff going on. So remember, this is Dream Theater. Just because it's simple doesn't mean it's that simple. All right, everybody. Thanks a lot. And uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel. You can donate to the Subscribe Star if you wish. www.subscribestar.com slash music. Or go to my website, www.romanovamusic.com, and you can do whatever you want there. I don't give a shit. All right, thank you very much. I'll see you guys next time.